have Miss Marilyn Johnson, the superintendent of the Warren School District, with us this morning. Miss Marilyn, we appreciate you being here. Thank you for taking time to visit with us. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Uh, we think our uh, viewers will be interested in, in a lot of things that we have to talk about. Obviously, the Warren School District is an important part of our community, plays a very vital role in it. Uh, you are not a new employee of the Warren School District. You have uh, certainly worked in several capacities before, but when did you officially become superintendent? That would have been July 1st, 2013. So you've just been at it a couple months That's as far right. as actually being in the position of superintendent. That's correct. Now, what other jobs have you had in education? I know that's your background. Right. Well, I, I began in Hermitage. Uh, I'm a graduate of Hermitage High School, and I, I started out there, and I taught four years there. Uh, my husband's job then took us to Ashley County. He was a wildlife officer down there, got his start down there, and so I taught four years in Crossit. Uh, and then he was able to transfer back to Bradley County, but my first year back, I wanted to remain in elementary, and... Uh, uh, there was not an elementary opening in Warren, but Monticello hired me. So I spent a year there. Then I taught three years at what is now Brunson, but it was Westside then. And then on September 15, 1993, uh, school had already started. You'll notice that date. I became principal of Eastside, and I spent 16 years uh, at Eastside. Wonderful years. But I had an opportunity to do something different. I uh, went to the co-op, uh, our education service co-op at Monticello. Uh, we service 14 school districts, and I was the assistant director and teacher center coordinator. And I did that for two years, and uh, then opportunity uh, uh, arose for me to come back to Warren as assistant superintendent. So the last two years, uh, after Miss Mary Jo Wisner retired, uh, I sat in that seat. So. I have had uh, various experiences. All those years together, if you add all that up, I'm in my 33rd year. I understand. Well, you've done a lot of different things in education from, from teaching to administration. And right. so you cover a lot of territory there. Let's talk about the Warren School District specifically. Uh, and this is kind of a broad uh, range question, but what's the overall status from your perspective? What, what's the condition of our school district right now? We are doing some very progressive things in our district. Um, as you know, we um, have uh, converted two of our schools to district conversion charter schools. Uh, and, and in doing so, let me, let me say first how that's different. Some people do have confusion over charter schools. There are open enrollment charter schools that, that are totally separate um, from a school district. Uh, anyone can open those. and, and the. Teachers don't necessarily have to be certified in those. Uh, but we have Eastside and Brunson as district conversion charter schools in order to get some waivers to do some outside-of-the-box thinking, so to speak. Uh, and this year, our middle school is taking some baby steps in that direction, and we will be applying for them to be a, become a district conversion charter school with plans as the students move up, uh, this concept moves up. So we are doing some, some very important work. As far as our test results, we are achieving at uh, Eastside, Brunson, and Middle School in literacy. Um, math is our uh, focus area there. Uh, at the high school, it's the reverse. However, um, there was a 14% increase at the high school this year in literacy, and we were 0.5% from being achieving in literacy also. We're an achieving school there in graduation rate and math and very close in literacy. Okay, so when you talk about achieving, that's meeting the standards, what's, right. what, uh, what the state uh, basically says you need to be accomplishing. Is that correct? Exactly. That, that's part of the annual measurable objective that's under the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, what was called No Child Left Behind. Uh, there are certain standards there and uh, there's a trajectory that's set as far as uh, the achievement levels, and, and we have come very close in some areas, and we're seeing some growth. We did have some dips this year, uh, but that's, that's not unexpected when you're doing the type change, second-order change that we're doing, and also changing from uh, our Arkansas curriculum frameworks to Common Core. So we, we're dealing with a lot of change. So we've had a, a, a few dips, but 
th while though that data is important, that's not the only data we look at. And with the standards-based system, we're looking down to the student level every day with formative assessments. And we're watching students become owners of their learning and having voice and choice in their learning. So, so we look at that formative data as well. And we are, we are very pleased with what we're seeing there. If you could just sum up the, what it means to have a conversion school versus the, for lack of a better way to put it, the, the, the old type of school, how would you explain that to our viewers? Well, um, you go through that process in order uh, there to uh, get waivers to do some things differently than standards allow. And uh, so within our charter, for example, we look at students progressing through levels of learning as they're ready, uh, teacher pace or faster, and it not being time-based. See, in a traditional setting, which by the way was set up in 1892 by the Committee of Ten, as I know you realize, uh, and, and education has not changed much since then. You know, in 1892, uh, there were eight grades established, uh, grade school, and then high school, and in high school, English was taught each year, a math was taught each year, a science was taught each year, and history was taught each year. That pretty much describes what we have now. Everything else has changed and is customized, but education's not changed that much. And so within uh, the system that we're trying to create, we're looking at learning being the constant, that students demonstrate proficiency and they move through learning levels as they're ready, rather than that magic number of 178 days, uh, I'm gonna sit in the seat and if I'm a kindergartner, I'm, I'm doing kindergarten standards, and then on that 178th day, automatically ready or not, or even if I was ready before then, um, um, the next year I'm going to first grade. So we're looking at what they're ready for and them moving through learning levels as they demonstrate proficiency. So that's what the district conversion process has done for us. We're able to do that. Uh, we're able to change that old system, that traditional system that's been in place since 1892 and customize learning for our students. And then they have some voice and choice in the way they demonstrate proficiency. They know their learning goals, they can tell you their learning goals, they track their learning, and uh, it's surprising. Uh, we even had reports from some parents last year of some students over Thanksgiving break that wanted to work on some of their, uh, their goals because they were so close and they wanted to go back and show their teacher that they could complete that one and move on. So it's some exciting work. It's, it's not easy work. If it was easy work, everyone would be doing it, and they're not, however, we have been asked um, to be a lead district for a Race to the Top grant to expand uh, personalized learning, customized learning, in Arkansas. So we are working uh, with the writing team now to be a lead district for that, to, to spread that in Arkansas. Give this is truly time. about the kids, isn't it? It's, try, it's trying to benefit them, help, help them to learn. Absolutely. Very good. I'm going to shift gears just slightly here on you. Um, and, see kind of how you want to approach this, but everybody has their management style and how they, anybody head of any organization, whether it's a public school or a city or a county or a private business, how would you describe your management style, although you haven't been at it too long here as, as the head person, but what would you say about that? Well, I, first of all, I would say that, that um, all of our people are leaders. We're even teaching our, our elementary students um, we're looking at a program called The Leader in Me and expanding that to habits of mind for our middle school students. Uh, so everyone is a leader and everyone has a leadership style and you don't stay in just one leadership style all the time. My typical leadership style is a democratic leadership style. Uh, I like to, to work with our team and we have a very strong uh, administrative team. Uh, we meet each month. Uh, that team includes our, our principals, assistant principals, um, our transportation director, our child nutrition director, uh, our LEA supervisor, um, our technology director, and we come together at the table and, and we talk about leadership. There's, there's an instructional focus point, uh, and this is a tradition that Mr. Talbert set, and it, it worked very well, and we're continuing that tradition. Um, in addition to that, um, as assistant superintendent, I had district leadership team meetings. Uh, each month, and Ms. Carla Wardlaw, our uh, current assistant superintendent, is continuing that tradition. We're sitting at that table 
and, and we're having some hard conversations, and we push each other on some issues. That's how you grow. Uh, so I would say that it's that my overall leadership is, is democratic leadership style, uh, but but as I said, uh, sometimes circumstances, you know, you have to move from, from one to the other. But typically I do like um, working with teams and, and everybody having voice and input into decisions. Let me, let me switch to money uh, just for a minute, just in, in some broad terms. But uh, let's talk about the Warren School budget. Uh, I know we have local tax money that goes into the school system. There's state money that goes into the system, and I'm sure there's some federal money from That's different correct. programs that go in. Can you just very, very briefly maybe kind of give us a percentage roughly of how much of our money is local, state, federal, that type of thing? I don't have percentages, but I can talk to you about some concerns that we uh, we do have about the budget. Of course, on the federal level, you mentioned that, and yes, we, we do receive federal funds. And in my former role, that's, you know, I, I coordinated those funds. I was a federal programs coordinator. Of course, Ms. Wardlaw is doing that now. Uh, but we have received cuts, you know, due to sequestration. Uh, so we have received cuts on the federal end. And then we receive, um, I think it's $1.3 million uh, NSLA funding, uh, National School Lunch Act funding. And our concern right now about that money um, is the that there are those in the legislature that would like to revert those funds to other places. Uh, we've been told expect big changes. Um, we've been told that there is the possibility that it, it could go away, but even if we do have it, um, it there are going to be many more restrictions. So federal money and then, of course, NSLA, that's, that's funded through, it's federal, but it's through the state, state categorical funds. ALE funds, uh, ELL, and state PD. That's all state categorical funds that we get. Uh, and and there, there are restrictions on that. Uh, so, so those are our, our budget concerns. And of course, uh, we, have, um, you know, we have buildings that have to be uh, kept up. And, and so we do have a partnership program in which uh, the state assists with uh, funding some of those projects. But some of those projects, that's changing also. We've done some warm, safe, and dry projects, roofing, HVAC systems, that kind of thing. Uh, but this is the last uh, cycle of the warm, safe, and dry. Uh, it, it appears that they're trying to convert us to just new construction. And in South Arkansas, we need, uh, you know, we still need some of those warm, safe, and dry projects to keep the buildings that we have uh, going because we don't have an increase in population. Well, it's an ongoing uh, effort to always keep the facilities in good shape and it keep is, them up and, and have and a good place for the kids. Absolutely, and, and I think you'll agree that, that we have a, a history of doing that, trying to keep our facilities looking really good. Uh, we have just recently uh, completed, we had to, uh, a roof project at the administration building, which that's locally funded project. The only uh, projects that can be part of the partnership program uh, are for facilities that are instructional facilities. So that was a local project. And of course, uh, our stadium, we just recently uh, painted it. I don't know if y'all noticed, it is truly lumberjack orange now. But, but that was past due. So we, we have to do some things uh, to keep things looking nice and, and to keep them uh, in good shape. And so that, that's always of concern. We do have uh, a master plan that's required. And uh, a committee takes a look at that plan uh, each year. And, and of course, that, that goes before the board. You have to plan that out for six years. Uh, so we are trying to look into the future, too. But that uh, also affects the budget. One final question. Okay. Uh, you've probably covered some of this already, but uh, what are your primary goals as superintendent, other than obviously to move forward with some of these programs you've already talked about? But anything else that uh, comes to mind that's a, a real goal of yours as superintendent? Well, uh, I, I shared with the staff my personal goals. And, and some of that is learning. You know, I am new in the seat of, of superintendent, um, so I do have a learning curve. Uh, so, so my goals, uh, first and foremost, are to continue to be a learner. I believe the best leaders, the best teachers, the best students even, you, you are, it's about continuous improvement. And so uh, I've, I've committed goals to learning more about finance, learning more about facilities, those things that I've not dealt with before that I'm dealing with now. And... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm from uh, 
Bradley County tomato patch. You know, I was raised there, so hard work does not scare me. And so that is, that's first and foremost, um, is for me to be a learner, to continue uh, the programs that we have, the standards base. Uh, we also have additionally new things uh, that the state has, has determined that we have to do, one of those being a teacher evaluation system. Well, it's called Teacher Excellence Support System, TESS. And so that's being implemented new this year. It's a good program. It's, it's a teaching model, but it's also an evaluation model. But it's new for our teachers. So with everything else that we're doing, you know, that's something else that's, that's a new challenge for them. So providing the support that our teachers need as, as we move towards standards-based model, as we move toward using the, the test system, and also there's a new evaluation system called LEADS for the principals. That's new this year. Uh, it's not that they're all totally separate programs. There are, they are aligned, so everything is in support. Like I said, it's an evaluation model, but it's also uh, a teaching model. So all of that lines up with what we're trying to do with the standards-based system. Uh, but those are, those are my primary goals. Well, we wish you all the best. We know you'll do a good job and uh, appreciate you taking time to visit with us today. And uh, just hope things keep going well for the Warren School uh, System because it's very important to our community. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And, and I'm very appreciative of the opportunity to be, to be the head learner uh, of the Warren Schools and, and pledge to do, do my very best every day. Thanks.